Hello everyone, welcome to another video from KillerReviews.com. My name is Greg, and we are going to review Avengers Age of Ultron. Uh, this very well might be the biggest movie of the year. I'm, I'm guessing it will be. It's sitting at about $350 million in week two. That's just the U.S. alone, which is insane. Uh, this, I'm guessing, will be the highest grossing movie of 2015. So uh, I'm a little intimidated when I review a movie this big. Uh, ugh, I mean, I don't know. Um, I, I've recorded this video about three times. Uh, one with the cat knocking, you know, uh, my water onto my keyboard, and my daughter keep coming in to to, to talk to me. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, the Avengers: Age of Ultron. I'll let you know. Let me read you the summary for this. I was going to tell you what it's about. But uh, I did, then I just kept confusing myself. So let me read it. For, let me read it to you. When Tony Stark and Bruce Banner try to jumpstart a dormant peacekeeping program called Ultron, things go horribly wrong, and it's up to Earth's mightiest heroes to stop the villainous Ultron from enacting this terrible his terrible plans. Um, yeah, you know, I saw this at the drive-in, the Milford Twin Drive-in here in New Hampshire. Um, I'm, I, you know, I gotta record another video about the experience of going to the drive-in. It is, you know, I went to the drive-in as a kid growing up. The same drive-in that I go to, I take my kids to now. And there's something about, it's so nostalgic going to the drive-in. They still have the polls where the speakers used to go to. But I think the polls are more there just to, just to make sure people park properly. But, um, man, like watching a movie outside with a blanket on a huge screen under the, under the sky is so badass. I'm telling you, um, there's quite a few drive-ins still left. Obviously, obviously nowhere near what it used to be. But I, I highly suggest that you ch check, you know, check your, uh, check the, your local internet, I was going to say. Check your local internet. And see if there's a driving location. Even if it's like an hour drive, I suggest you go check it out. It's it's so worth it. So um, I saw Avengers Age of Ultron at the drive, and it was the first movie. And um, uh, this girl I went to the drive with, one of my great friends, Melissa, she kept asking me during the movie, like I don't I'm, like I don't know I don't know what's going on. Like like what is going on? And I'm like, look. <laughs> Like, I don't either, because, like, there's so much, like, computer jargon. Because, um, like, I I spent a lot of time, like, in the beginning of the movie with my kids, like, getting getting ready, like, getting the blankets out, uh, getting snacks ready. But um, there, there's a lot of compu computer, you know, technology talk about the program. But literally, like, like, like what the plot boils down to is is a computer program named Ultron, you know, which is the big robot, He's actually multiple robots uh, trying to take over the world. That's basically what it is. We take out all of the, the technology talk, uh, all the tech talk. It's about a robot trying to take over the world. So um, let me give you. So the film's directed by, written, directed by Joss Whedon, and we don't have time to do the whole, you know, like let's learn about the movie in in this episode in this review. So we're gonna we're gonna jump right in. Uh, you know who the film stars. And it's written directed by, like I said, Josh Whedon, the biggest geek of all time. Uh, some of the pros for the movie. Um, more of what we all love. Uh, we love the Avengers. The cast is very fun, right? We love watching Scarlett Johansson. We like watching the Hulk break shit. We like watching Tony Stark make witty comments. Uh, we like to see Captain America and his shield, right? Like, we like cool action. Uh, that's all. That's all here. Uh, there's more of that than you could possibly, um, intake. Uh, it is over, it's like, it's like a barrel that is overflowing with water, I guess. You know, I, uh, it's, it's way, I mean, like, if that's what you want, that you're going to sit with a full stomach. How about that? Um, uh, I like the additional I like the addition of Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. These are two new Avengers. Uh, they don't start out as Avengers in the movie. Um, they're both really, really strong characters. 
Like, their abilities, in my opinion, are much stronger than quite a few of the Avengers themselves. But I thought that was something fresh and new, a good take on um, on the series. I, I liked seeing new characters. And I liked how they didn't start out as good characters. They, they, they were bad. Like, they were the bad guys for a while. Um, some parts were laugh-out-loud funny. Yes. I mean, that's a big part of the series, right? Um, all these Marvel movies are like one-liners, right? The old Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'll be back type stuff. Uh, remember, actually, that wasn't even a joke, but, um, you know, like the one-liners. Whenever they do something cool, there's a one-liner. Um, I, I thought there were a ton of those. Some, some were just downright odd. Like, like during the finale of the movie, um, Tony Stark is trying to find Hulk and Scarlet. Uh, um, um, Hulk and uh, Black Widow. And he goes, uh, you two better not be playing hide the zucchini. And I was just like, what? Like, like in the middle of all of this chaos and the world ending, there's like a cock joke? Like, you know, it's like, what? And th- there were, there were two, two, two dick jokes within a matter of like a few minutes with each other. And I leaned over to my friend Melissa and I'm like, did, I'm like, did they just, did they just like do the, do the zucchini dick joke? And she's like, yeah, yeah, they did. So, I mean, like, some were really hit, and, and, and some, I mean, like, some were very, like, laugh a lot funny for me. Some were god-awful, and there were, like, 50 jokes too many in the movie. Um, I, I, uh, another pro, I, I, I liked the love story between Banner and Black Widow. Uh, they have something going on, and it was just, it was, first of all, I think Mark Ruffalo... Between you and me, he's kind of one of the better actors in all of this stuff. I think he's, uh, I think he's Academy Award winning level acting, and some of these other guys I don't think are. Sorry, but um, I thought that was one of the most interesting parts of the movie is uh, the having is, uh, can Hulk have a relationship? Like, how does that work? And um, and Black Widow is the only character that can calm Hulk down, which I thought that was really interesting. That was a really cool take on. I don't know if that's from the comic books or whatnot, but um, I did think it was cool to, to see Hulk in love and or ha- you know like them two. Like, how would it work if they had a relationship? And they talk about that in the movie. I thought that was one of the better parts and in um, one of the like, the more fresher takes. On, on this, this type of content. So that's kind of it for pros. Uh, I have a lot of cons. Let's see here. Uh, the villain... Oh, man. Where do I even start? Okay. Like, seeing the trailers, right? Seeing the trailers and this, this huge robot um, and James Spader's voice and the way, like, the trailers portrayed it as, like, uh, you know what? You know what? You, you Avengers have like been playing kids games, but now like all hell, like like now like the world's ending, like like now you're, and the trailer really showed them like I, like like fighting against all odds, like it was almost impossible to come back and and fight this this robot Ultron. That's not at all what the movie was like for me. Uh, first of all, I never really felt like the Avengers w- were in any danger whatsoever. I mean, you know they're not going to kill off the, the the main cast of people. You, you know, like Captain America's not going to die, and um, I never felt like like Ultron was even close to uh, like taking over the world. Um, but 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 here's my main problem with with James Spader being is being Ultron, like like I said earlier in the review, I think I said it in, the, in this take, um, I'm a huge James Spader fan. I've been a fan of his since, uh, you know, the early mid-80s. And he has a very distinctive voice, right? Now, when I'm watching, it, it's cool in a trailer that's like, you know, two minutes long, but when I'm watching the movie, um, the whole time I'm watching the movie, I just keep thinking James Spader. 
you know, my, in my head, it's like, oh, James Spader, James Spader, James Spader, James, because his voice is so unique. And I'm like looking at a robot, and I'm picturing James Spader in the studio doing the voice. So, you know, if you don't know him very well, if you, if you, like, if you don't know of him very well, uh, then, then, you know, that obviously that wall of believability is much, much stronger. But, man, if you've been a fan of his for 30 years and seen almost everything he's ever done, then, yeah, that sticks out like, like, like that really puts a dent in the movie experience. Um, and, you know, it's like, in this movie, uh, I didn't like seeing Hawkeye's family. Um, I, the Avengers, please keep them, like, crime fighting and in, like, the lab in, you know, in, like, the secret fortress, uh, I, f I forget what there, of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, keep them in, like, in the S.H.I.E.L.D. area. Like, I don't have to see, I don't have to see, uh, Captain America chopping wood on, you know, bl on, uh, what the fuck guy's name is, on Hawkeye's farm. Uh, I don't have to see Hawkeye's wife, you know, bitching about him going back to work. I mean, literally, like, picture, like, like the Terminator, like, his day's done, he comes home, he, like, makes some food, and sits down and watches, like, fucking uh, Friends, Friends reruns on TV. Like, we don't need to see, for me, I know what they're doing. They're trying to expand the characters, make them real. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, I, I leaned over to my friend Melissa, and I'm like, here we go. Like, another movie wife, yet another movie wife, complaining about her that her husband's job is too dangerous and he, he needs to stop soon. Like, she's literally talking to one of the Avengers, and she's like, honey, I'm pregnant now. I can't, you know, I think, I think you need to consider, like, not going out back out there anymore. Like, stay home with me. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, he's a super, well, he's not, he's not I mean, he's one of the Avengers, but he's human, right? Like, a bullet can kill him. And please, between you and me, he would have died a million years ago if he's just a human doing what he's doing. So um, that was like the annoying wife coming in and saying, you need to quit your job. Ugh. Uh, the story and action were so mediocre. Yeah, I mean, um, th this drives me crazy. Like, I don't know how you're sitting there in a writer's room and keep in mind, when I say this, I have all the respect in the world for, for Joss Whedon and what these guys do. I mean, this is a, a huge movie. They knocked it out of the park money-wise. Um, but uh, if, I, if you're in, like, in a writing room and like somebody mentions to you, like, hey, uh, how about we have this like computer program that kind of like, like, you know, like learns how to... like like like, learns how to, you know, do things for itself and has a mind of its own, and then it just takes off, and then, you know, then it just starts making other robots. And, I mean, I, the first thing I would say is, like, eh, like, really? Like, this is Avengers 2. Avengers 2. We can't think of anything other besides a computer program, like, taking over the world. Like, we can't, we, there's no other idea. I mean, we, we, we gotta do something better than that. It's gotta be something better than that, something more original. Um, but like, they're literally, to me, it's just like, like that comes up in the writer's room and they're like, you know what? That's a great idea. Like, boom. Yeah, let's go with it. Yeah. Yeah. Computer program. It's like, it, uh, it's like, you know, it comes to mind like, like the newer James Bond movies. Um, that last one I thought was so good and I can't think of what it is right now. But, um, I, I, I really can't think of what the last Bond movie was. But, like, they, like, they're so different and fresh. And here's the deal. Like, I think one of the things that makes, um, a, a movie like Avengers and Batman and Superman, I think one of the things that makes them, s that, like, uh, how do I say this? Cr like, like, the story so good is you have to have an awesome villain. I mean, look at the the, the Dark Knight trilogy is my is my favorite trilogy of all time. Um, and look at those villains, like the Joker, right? I mean, this dude was blowing up fucking hospitals. 
right? And then, um, whatever, the guy with the... No, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, Trap Jaw, Greg. Um, and the villain, you know... <laughs> Oh my god. It's really hard to think of other movies when your mind is so focused on trying to make good points and keep things moving. But the villains in the Dark Knight trilogy, um, they're so strong. And you spend half the movie with the villain. You know what I mean? And I think you have to have a great villain to have these movies be awesome. Like, Loki was an awesome villain in the first Avengers. This is a fucking computer program. It's like, come on, dude. Like, it, you know, and then the, the whole finale of the movie, which I, I guess I guess I, I don't want to talk about for spoilers, but, like, it was just so blah, blah. blah. This is the whole movie is blah, 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 blah. It was just so average. Um... And, you know, the same thing with the second Star Trek movie, too. I feel like these people get lazy. It's like... It's like these writers just... They don't want to make a great movie. They want to make a popcorn movie. And... And just be satisfied with that. And I think that they're better than that. I think they can be. I mean, the last Captain America movie was way better than this movie. That villain was phenomenal in the last Captain America movie. Um, you know, my last, you know, my last comment is, I, I think that they need to have different directors on board. Um, I think you have to have a better vision of the movie. I mean, look, the, these movies are going to, here's the deal. These movies will still make money, right? Avengers 2 made a shitload of money, okay? But look, if you lower the quality of the movies, like, over time, you're going to start burning your audience, because we started loving these movies back with Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. We started loving these movies because they were really, really good movies. Besides the action, the acting was great. The stories were really good. It was fresh, new. Um, I mean, think about like Batman Begins, how, 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 how good that story is and how good Christian Bale was and, and you know... Um, the, the 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 epic scope of the movie. Um, I I I think if you start to lower, look, kids will eat this shit up, right? Like like it's fucking candy all day long. But you're gonna start losing a lot of your hardcore audience if you if if you're not gonna start focusing on making a really good movie first first and foremost before all the special effects and stuff. So let me end my review here with going going to Rotten Tomatoes. I kind of like kind of like doing this. Uh, we have a, a review here. Fans of the franchise will be pleased, but those looking in from the outside of comic book culture may find themselves also looking at their watches. Um, yeah, see, I don't know. I don't, I don't read these comic books, so for me, I was looking at my watch. They're actually right. I don't have a watch, but I know what they're saying. Um. Another one, the sound you hear is the bubble getting near to bursting. That's, I think that's very true, absolutely. Um, another, another review, more does not necessarily equal better. Here, more is just meh. Um, those are some of the negative reviews. But like I said, Age of Ultron has a, a whopping 74% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. And some people here, um, Age of Ultron is a minute shorter than its predecessor, but it's bigger movie in nearly every other regard. Yeah, apparently uh, Perry Simon from Under the Radar likes bigger and better. Uh, it's difficult to sit through Age of Ultron without feeling like a child. It's, excuse me, it's fun, touching, exciting, funny, enthralling, moving and spectacular. It makes the fact that it could be Whedon's last MCU adventure even more upsetting. Um, Joss Whedon set a higher bar with the first Avengers and tried in many ways to top it here. He got close. Um, it's too big. It's too frenzied. It's too full of characters. It, can, it can't contain. Mostly it's just too much of everything. That's what I felt like. That's exactly what I felt like. Ken Hank from Mountain Express in North Carolina. Um, it's just too 
much. And not enough of a good story. Okay, uh, I would give this movie a 3 out of 5, probably like a 3, maybe a 3.5, just for uh, special effects. But uh, I was disappointed. Look, the movie's not awful by any means. It's just, it's entertaining, I get that. But I want more. I want a good storyline. I want, I don't want your average, I mean, ugh, it's just a... I guess if 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 its if its number one goal is to have action and make money, it sure succeeded in that. All right, thanks for watching. My name's Greg, and I'm with KillerReviews.com. Check out KillerReviews.com. Go to the forums, post, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and please comment below. Okay, commenting and leaving thumbs up, um, those help my videos get higher up in the search in the search rankings. Okay, and check out the Killer Reviews podcast. Thanks for watching, and have an awesome day.